Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Peterson. I've got a great show for you today. Oh, my gosh. We have uh, the man, the legend, uh, a guy that's been doing this business for a long time, good friend of mine, Mr. Larry Goins. How are you doing, Larry? What's up? up? How's everybody doing? Oh, man. I'm almost more than a year doing this podcast. Wow. Wow. What's cool about it is I keep getting to like interview awesome people like you. And, cool, man. Uh, it makes That's the show great. a lot of fun. And I just interviewed you last week. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, you, and we did it when I was in Hawaii. I know, right? Oh, you were in Hawaii so cool. and I was in the mountains of North Carolina. But I would much rather been where you were. <laughs> yeah, but it was still, it was awesome. That was fun. It was um, cool. Hey, listen, so uh, for everybody that doesn't know who Larry is, Give me, uh, tell us about who you are and your, your background and your story. Give, give us that. All right, stuff cool. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm from Hickory, North Carolina. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Hickory, North Carolina, high school graduate, CD student, right? And uh, never made good grades in school, but I was always, always, always thinking about business. I was always wanting to do business, right? And uh, even when I was a kid, man, I used to go down to the sawmill and get uh, make, get steaks and sell them at the flea market as tomato steaks. And then I, I went from there. I, I painted cars and, you know, did lawn care and all kind of stuff and uh, started reading books about real estate and uh, went to a real estate seminar. And I was dug in, man. I went to a three-day event, paid money. And uh, eventually got my real estate license. I got my contractor's license. And I did my very first deal, Corey, in 1986, over 30 years ago. Can you believe that? Wow, brother. I am talking with a legend, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Man, that's just like, that's super. Like, that doesn't happen every day. I mean, there's a lot of people that have not been investing, like, that long i mean you've seen more markets market cycles than most would ever even dream of you know it's funny you say that my very first deal was an fha non-qualifying assumable loan and they haven't made those since 1978 right so you used to be able to just sign your name and take over an fha loan regardless of your credit you could have just got out of prison and had no job and signed your name and and assumed an fha loan but so they stopped all, that in 1978. All them old school books that I used to read by Robert Allen and all those guys yeah. back in the day, all that yeah. stuff was, that was reality. Yeah, Al Lowry, Wade Cook, Robert Allen, you know, all those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, isn't that funny? Now, if you've like looking through that glass and you think about how real estate's done now, what's the biggest changes you've seen? Technology. Yeah. technology by by a long shot right I, I remember Corey this is funny I remember when I used to go and uh you know I used to go look at houses on the MLS and and it was like a book right you'd flip through oh I, I want to go look at this one I want to go look at the, I want to go look at this property right it was a book MLS was a book right and they came out every single week every week so you'd flip through the book and you had to pick up the phone and call the agent because they didn't have email. They didn't have a website, yeah. right? You had to call the agent. I remember that. I remember that so well. Wow. Right? That's just like the dark days of real estate when it was <laughs> the wild, wild west, man. Good times. Good times. Oh, man. Jeez, and, now, so, yeah. and now you can pull up to a house, open up your phone. You can see who owns that house. It'll look up their address. It'll look up their phone number, and you can send them a postcard right from your smartphone, as long as it has an apple on the back. (laughs) (laughs) Man, that is just, that's the kind of, when you think of it that way, and really that's where technology has has driven us, right? Um, Right. How fortunate to have your perspective on real estate, man. And I know, uh, I want to talk about something. You recently posted a really cool video. It's probably your best Facebook video ever. 
where you had some realities. You've been doing this business for a long time. Right. Long time. Right. I have. And it's like, you know, sometimes we go in like, so I've been talking this for a while, and this is my mantra, is that there's lots of guys that we've been doing, like every time you turn on the TV, Larry, you see fix and flip, right? Flip this right. house or wholesale this house and make some quick money, right? Right. And I've been guilty, right? I'm guilty uh, of getting into that. I call it almost a little bit of a trap because you get right. used to the quick profits. And then, but the thing is, is every day you got to go back to the grind, right? And you got to go out and, and figure out. And sometimes what happens is we get lost. I know for me, right. I'll tell the story of when I, I was working so much, Larry, that uh, my son looked at me one day on a Friday and was like, dad, are you going to, you going to make the, uh, the game? Right. And I'm like, y you bet. And, um, and I missed it because I was working and I'd let all the wrong things become a priority in my life. And, um, and I think that's, you've been sharing a little bit about that. So you tell me that story for you. Like you just come to realization. Well, surprised. yeah, I, I have, I've always had a really, really good work ethic, Corey. Um, I mean, I get up early, I stay late. I've got a good work. Nobody has ever called me lazy, right? And e even even having employees in the office, you know, I've always had the the mentality of you cannot outwork me, right? Yep. Uh, you're a hustler. You're a hustler, brother. You're a hustler I, I, like me. Like when you don't come yeah. for nothing, that's how it is, is it not? That's exactly right. If it was given to you then you don't appreciate it, right? Yep. But you and I, we've had to work for everything we got. We weren't born with the silver spoon, right? Don't you know <clears throat> where that one exists, right? We, <laughs> we've had to work hard for what we've got, right? So I think over the years, and I've been doing real estate for 30 years, been teaching people for 15, and I, I think over the years, I just got into a routine of uh, that's just the way it is. I'm traveling all the time, speaking, teaching, you know, I, I'm, I'm usually the first one in the office and the last one to leave. And, and I haven't taken vacations in years except for, you know, like going on uh, real estate investor cruises, you know, cruises with other people while I'm speaking and teaching and stuff like that. But I came to a realization um, a couple of weeks ago and a mastermind you and I are both in. Yep. Right. Yep. And you didn't, you didn't make that one, but because you were in Hawaii, right? <laughs> yep. So we did miss you, but we would have rather been with you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, uh, I came to the realization there because, you know, I mean, listen, business is cyclical, right? Yeah. Real estate is hot right now. Right. And and trees don't grow to the sky. So even though real estate is like this, it'll eventually go like this, right? Yep. It goes so down. Real uh -huh. estate and business is cyclical. And, and, and I, I learned some things and shared some things at the mastermind last week that just made me realize, why am I doing this? Right? Yeah. I, I'm supposed to be doing this to not have to do this anymore. Right? Yeah. Uh, that, that's supposed to be the, the realistic part of it is I'm supposed to be doing it so I don't have to do it anymore. But I got so caught up in the grind that, you know, I'm like, I wanted to be the first one there. I wanted to be the last one to leave. I wanted to set an example. I wanted to be knee deep in every deal. I wanted to hear my guys on the phone and I'm feeding them lines and telling them what to say. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I, wanted, I wanted to do the, all that. You make me but, want to do it right now too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I came to the realization, man, I, I got a Harley sitting at home that I hardly ever ride. I got a boat that we hardly ever go on. We live on the lake. I got a wave runner I hadn't been on in two years. And I got a place in the mountains that I hardly ever go to. And you know, I got a wife and a son at home and I got a daughter with two small kids. And, and I don't spend near as much time with them as I should. So I just came to that realization that 
you know, man, I, I got to start taking care of me, right? Yeah. I got to start taking care of me and my family. And that video you were talking about that I posted on Facebook, on my Facebook page, it was, it was really just kind of off the cuff and from the heart. And I didn't really plan on doing it. I just got through running yeah, three miles. Yeah, you, right? were, you were exhausted. You were in a very tranquil state. Is it, it, it really? showed, I mean, it showed like you had been, yeah. it's like you did a workout. You could tell you're, you're done with your workout and it was a good one. Right. Right. And in that you, you, you just let, like, it was like a freedom of, you were just going to share a big epiphany that you'd had on your run. Well, you know what? Or, and, like, and that's what you've been feeling. And I told the guys at the mastermind, I said, look, I haven't, I haven't gone running in about 10 months. They're like, Larry, you need to get out there and run. You need to, I want you to commit to run. I said, okay, I'm going to commit to running five days a week. They said, no, wait a minute. It's going to take you a while to work up to it, right? So commit to three days, you know, and start with a mile or two. I said, no, man, I can pick up at three miles, right? Yeah. So, and sure, sure enough, I mean, I hadn't run in about 10 months, and, and, I, uh, and, and I've run every day except Saturday and Sunday since then, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I ran three miles this morning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, baby. But, um, you know, I just got finished doing that and I, and I'm thinking, man, I, I gotta, I gotta get my bike out. I gotta go riding. I've got to, you know, I have people invite me to do stuff all the time. Larry, let's go deep sea fishing. Larry, come spend a week at the ranch. Come do this. And, you know, and, and like, like you guys, we're, we're, you know, I'm hoping we're going to go to Sturgis together. Right. Yes. Yes. Next, next one. Yeah, so yeah. that I promise will happen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, you know, in that video, I just kind of realized that there's more to just work. I mean, I love work. I love the thrill. I love the hunt. I love, yes. I love the fact that you eat what you kill. Right. Yeah. And, and I've always, I mean, I've been in business, you know, I've been in business for many, many, many years. Right. And I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, the first, the first big chunk of money I made, I was about 17 years old and I bought a Corvette. I know that sounds a little odd, but you know, I was 17 and I drove a school bus and worked another full-time job and I found a repo and, and, uh, and I was able to do that. And, uh, so I bought that car and it was blue 68 Corvette Stingray. Right. Yeah, baby. Gosh. And uh, and it was blue, but I wanted to paint it red because red's my favorite color. Most of the cars I've ever owned have been red, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> so I didn't know how to paint a car. I just went out and learned how to do it. They didn't have YouTube videos back then, right? <laughs> but I just learned how to do it. There was a guy that worked at the at the parts department where I worked at the Cadillac dealership, and he had a body shop, so he taught me. And, uh, and I painted my own car and, you know, the day I was putting the bumpers on it, my neighbor came down and offered me twice of what I had in it and I never drove it again. I was afraid I would wreck it and never see that money. So I sold it and doubled my money. <laughs> <laughs> but business has been in your blood, brother, right? That's right. And, That's you know, right. It's funny because I'm sitting here listening to you tell the passion that you have behind real estate, right? It's right. not I love just, them. it's not what you do. It's your passion. Right. And for me, it's the same way I could, I could <laughs> work 24 seven almost. Right. I could wake up and come in my office and start working and I could work till 10 o'clock in the evening and I'd right. be personally fine. Right. Like I like that. Now my family and my friends and everything else, they don't like that. Right. And the truth is, if I'm real honest, I like spending more time with my family than I do working. I might like work a lot, but I also really like enjoying good quality time with going to the lake uh, with the right. kids. Right. Um, I do like I ride a Harley, too, brother. And I like getting on that thing and just going for a ride. Are you ever going to get that thing back? <laughs> man, it's been um, I you know what? I called them yesterday. I was like, listen, where are we at on the paint? Because like. You've not given me a sample. Um, I've got, like, they've had my motorcycle for a full 
almost year. In August, it'll be a full year. Now, I'm telling you, if this thing doesn't come out and look so cherry and be like <laughs> the, the Taj Mahal, I'm going right, to be right. heartbroken. Cause I think well, you've I, waited long enough. Yeah, I think I got about another two weeks is what he said. So That's um, great. Which means That's three, great. which means three weeks, really, right? Yeah. <laughs> or two months. <laughs> yeah, or, or another month, honestly. But that's fine because I just want it right. But um, but my whole point is, man, sometimes in business, you've got to really, like what you just said, you are now thoughtfully carving out your time first for Larry. <laughs> And then the rest you can fill with work. Well, you know, Corey, I, I've, I've I've spent a lot of money on education. I am a CD student, okay? I mean, I mean, but I am a firm believer in education. Look, there's one bookcase. Yep. See that? Yeah, oh yeah. There's another bookcase. Yep. Look. Oh, in the floor I got stuff. Yeah. Look at this. Oh yeah. Two more bookcases full of stuff and stuff junkie. in the floor over here too, right? Information junkie, brother. Which, by the way, there's a guitar I built, designed and built, have a patent on it. All right on. <laughs> <laughs> but I am a firm believer in education, as you can see, just not formal education, right? Yep. Just not a formal education. And, and, and I am a student. I mean, this morning while I was running, I was listening to the book called The One Thing, right? Mm -hmm. Great book, by the way. And I try to listen to a book a week. I try to listen to at least one book a week. And I, and I, try, to, I try to make the Bible one of those, you know, I, I try to listen to some of the Bible. Yep. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's harder to understand when you can't unpack it and listen to it and pay attention. But, uh, but I do try to do that. I, I've got this one called uh, the chronological, the, the one year chronological Bible, which is pretty cool. It doesn't tell you the books and the chapters, but it goes in chronological order, which really helps you understand it better. But anyway, um, so I am a firm believer in education, but one of the things nobody ever taught me, nobody ever taught me until uh, I started hanging out with people like you and Sean McCloskey and some of these and Ron Phillips and some of these guys start talking about personal vision, right? You got to yes. have a personal vision and, and you got to, you, money can't be a part of it, right? Right. Money does not need to be a part of it, right? There's so, right there, my vision board. Oh man, I love that. You put that on Facebook. Guys, if you're watching this right now, if you haven't seen that, go to Corey's Facebook page and look at his personal vision. He literally had somebody draw, right? Draw a picture of everything in his personal vision yep. and put it on Facebook. It's awesome. I love it. I love yeah. it. Especially the Superman pulling the thousand units, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's all fit. You know, but it's a, it's, you know, and it's right here to my right. I see it every time I walk in my office, right? It's like first in, in my, in my head, my, I see it daily and it helps me like, okay, am I, am I living up to the vision, right? Corey, Corey, take a minute and share. I mean, just rattle off some of the things on that vision board right now. Uh, so buy a thousand units in 2018, um, drop to 185. Now that one I got to start working on right now. <laughs> I've been still eating a little bit, but dating my wife, <laughs> uh, go on a date once a month with my wife, pray with my kids every night. Um, awesome. go, go on, uh, two, two to three big trips with the entire family. We just came off of one, right? Uh -huh. um, I'm going to go, actually I'll leave tomorrow to go with my kids again. Uh, we're going to go, uh, to Missouri and go canoeing down a river. Back cool. To my, back to my hometown. Um, pray, pray. So pray with my kids, and then uh, something about some about a little bit of, about my training, um, uh, education stuff. Right, being able to educate some people. Right. You got something on there. I'm not your guru, too. Right. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, <laughs> that's what. It go says. buy some apartments. Yeah, yeah and I'll <laughs> always be true to myself, and don't let people try to change me. There you go. And you got something about baptizing your kids too on there, right? Yeah. 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 That's going to happen. See, man, uh, this, I remember, I remember this fall, this fall we're going to I'm baptizing both my kids 
are th- one's 13, one's 14, and uh-huh. um, they, you know, they know the Lord, and um, but they want to officially make it, and I've made them wait. Uh, they've wanted to do it earlier, but I've made them wait to right. where I right. feel like they're to a, an age that they can really understand the meeting and the concept behind it. Sure. And, and so, but I mean, how cool is that going to be? That's awesome, like, man. That's going to be it. that 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 day is going to change. Like, I already know. I mean, I know my kids are safe, but I mean, just to to do that act and 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 be, uh, you know, and to be a part of it. Yeah, man. Like that's a great day uh, for me. That means I did something right. Um, you know, God gives us these gifts, man, and um, you know, <laughs> we're all just normal people, Larry. I'm I'm like you. I barely made it out of high school. I'm not. I wasn't the best student, but I yeah. had vision, and I knew I wanted to be somebody. Right? I really did. I wanted to be. I wanted to be important. I don't know. That's not vanity. It's just when you come from right. nothing. Trying to get out takes a lot of willpower, right? A lot well, of it's focus. Like Nito, it's like Nito Quaben says, you wanted significance, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't happen overnight. But, you know, and I didn't really get the download from the mothership till I was 30. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, I was managing restaurants, selling cars. Uh, I sold vacuum cleaners. I sold Kirby vacuum cleaners door to door. That's a tough sell, man. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to be a closer to do it, which Coffee. is a good thing. Coffee's for closers, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but you know, what you're saying too is, you know, it's all about ba- work life balance. Just what you've experienced now is, hey, listen, let me just put the balance in. Man, for me, that group that we have is, isn't is it not special? Man, that, it's a great group. And I, I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this, man, I, I have, I have, you know, I've always focused on business and I've had a lot of acquaintances, Yeah. but it's very hard to get to me and, and the real person and really sit down and what's going on. What are you struggling with? What's happening right now? Right. Yeah. I've never really been that kind of person. I'm, I'm a 30,000 foot person, but being in a group like that allows you to be vulnerable and it allows you to be able to open up yourself. And, and, and one thing I've realized, and I'm 57 years old, okay? Well, I know I don't look it, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look 40, but, 40 at least. You know? <laughs> but one of the things I've realized is people do need that, right? People yeah. need somebody to share stuff. There was a guy at our group yeah. uh, uh, last week. He was, he was saying, you know, I got some acquaintances, but I don't really have anybody I can open up with. And, and Sean, I believe it was said, well, have you opened up to them any? Cause maybe if they, you open up to them, they might open up to you. It's like, wow, I never, I never really thought about that, you know? So I think that's very, very important. I, I just, I just put myself out there and I was vulnerable and, and everybody said, whoa, Larry, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, yeah. you, you, you need to be taking care of yourself and your family. Why are you working so hard? Why are you doing everything you're doing? You need to start living for Larry now. Go ride that Harley, you know? In fact, yeah. Ron, Ron is coming up here in a couple of weeks, and, and Sean and, uh, and Joe, they're all coming over here to spend a couple of days with me, and we're going to go ride bikes. Man. I better get I better get an email invite. I'll come out there and rent one. <laughs> do it, man. Do I it. I will. I'm serious. That'd I'm, be a that'd be a lot of fun, man. I don't want to be... miss that. You kidding me? <laughs> that would be like uh, what's that movie where those uh, those guys, uh, wild hogs or whatever? I can't remember what movie yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. Bunch of uh, guys get together, decide to go ride bikes, man. Yeah. That could yeah. be, that could be really funny. Um, well, you know, Ron lives in Charleston now, which is only a few hours from me, but Sean uh, and Joe are going to have to fly over, so I'm sure they'll be renting a bike e- also. All right. Well, send me the dates when that is, because I might, I might show I, I'll probably show up. That'd I'd be awesome, that. man. I'd yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting how we've come in. Like, we've not even talked about real estate at all, really. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I'm telling you, people need to hear this kind of stuff. Because, you know, 
You know, that's true. I mean, we could sit here and talk about all the houses we're wholesaling. We could talk about the seller finance, the lease options, all the apartments you're buying. I mean, you got, you got four or 500 units under contract right now. Yeah. And, and, you know, we could sit here and talk about all that, but at the end of the day, nobody is going to remember how many units you own, how many houses you flipped, how much cash flow you have, but what they will remember if you were able to give them a little something that could change their life generationally, right? Yep. yep. That's what's really, really important. Yep. Yep. And that, and, and then the quality of time that you spent with the ones you cared about, because right. there's, there's time becomes more valuable commodity as I've started to get older. And, and, and I think even you, you're like, you're saying the same thing is, when you start looking at your the time quotient, right? Like, what's my time worth? And then you start right. saying, well, I want to start spending my time doing some other, with other things, right? And it's not always real estate. And, right. And in the beginning, sometimes you, I always say you got to sprint and marathon. There's times right. in our lives that you have to sprint. Right. Right. You've got to full out focus, blinders on, grindstone, and you got to do some work. But once you get that work, you've got to learn that you got to start marathoning. And and sometimes that's what I call it is marathoning. Runners, right? right? Runners, right? People the that run. Yeah, yeah, the long distance game. Then you just set a pace, right? You know, you control your breathing. You're just, you kind of go at a nice pace. You're not trying to kill, kill yourself. Because you, right. can't, you can't sprint forever. And you that's can't true. work it's, it's, hard forever. It's true. It's kind of like a plane taking off. You know, it's sitting on the runway. When you start out in business, your your business is sitting on the runway, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't ease up on it a little bit, right? I mean, you got to hammer down. Yeah. Until you get up to cruising altitude, right? Yeah. Then you can back off a little bit, right? But you, that, but you got to hammer that's down. That's a great analogy. Damn, that's good. <laughs> that's exactly it, man. Because That's I mean, it. that really is the analogy of business, right? I mean, right. W- when you first start, it's a lot of work. You're doing, and you're doing all the work yourself almost a lot of times in the beginning. And then you right. start, and then like sometimes you wake up and just like I got Sarah behind me, right? That's some of my, wave, say hi, yep. That's my, that's my Candace. Hey, Sarah, what's up? <laughs> but so Sarah's like my Candace, you start getting some staff. And you realize that you can delegate some of your stuff more often than not. And a lot of times what I've found that I'm guilty of is I'll hold on to tasks and things that I probably right. shouldn't be holding on to. You know, in other words, once I give it away and then they're like, yeah, you should have given this to me a long time ago. I can handle it. No problem. And then that's the right. one less thing that you have to worry about that doesn't consume your time and energy. Right. That's true. And, and then uh, sometimes guys like us, we're the bottleneck when we try to get back in the way. <laughs> every time, every time I'm the biggest bottleneck in my business. I'm sure you're the so, same sure, way. I can't hardly see, but I'm sure Sarah's shaking her head. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. She's, she's always trying to keep me on. T- even like today I'm sitting there doing some stuff. She's like, Corey, you need to get off this phone and do the work that you're supposed to, which is right here. And then, right. and by the way, you got a podcast with Larry coming up, so you need to like get focused, focused, so you can get that done. <laughs> and um, and yet I'm like, I want to get on the phone and call my friend, right? And she's like, right, you know, bad boy, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least she keeps you on track. I mean, you know, and that's it. It, it does. And now, you know, this wonderful thing we call real estate. I mean, is it not a beautiful thing? Well, you know, the thing I love about real estate, Corey is there's so many ways to do it. It's not like flipping a car, right? Or it's not like being in the insurance business. With real estate, there's so many ways you can do it. There, number one, there's so many different types of real estate, right? Yeah. Commercial, residential, multifamily, triple net lease, like Dollar Generals, and, and there's, you know, there's single family, there's multifamily, there's mobile homes, there's mobile home parks, there's self-storage, and then you have different models. You've got wholesaling, retailing, fix and flip, turnkey, lease options, subject to, short sales. You got all different kind of things you can do, right? And then you got sources. You got, you know, you've got off market properties. You can market through direct mail, PPC, all that stuff. You've got HUD, MLS, VA properties. 
you got all different kind of sources of properties, right? And then you got all different kind of financing. You know, you could use private money, hard money, cash partners, credit partners. You know, you could use your own money. There's so many things you can do with real estate, right? I don't yeah. care if you need cash now or if you need cash flow, there's a real estate system out there. Man, and there is. And man, and all it needs to be done is find one that works for you and implement it. Right? I mean, you teach right. all the all the time on 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 real estate and the ones that are most successful you give me tell me if i'm wrong or just the ones that go out and implement well that's it you got to take action I, i've always said this Corey. this is so important the only place you'll find success before work is in the dictionary <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? there is no free lunch right that's right that's exactly right that's exactly right. And you you got to put forth the effort. A lot of people think they can buy a book or a home study course or listen to a podcast, watch a YouTube video, and they're going to make a million dollars. No, you've got to take action and you got to take massive action and you got to get that baby off the ground. Then you can start to coast a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't, uh, when I first started, it wasn't like this, right? It's not what everybody sees, this right. wonderful cash for life. I didn't hit the play button. And like, that's what I had. I hit the play button and nothing worked. I'm like, oh crap. Um, I well, gotta go. It's like when you said, it's like when you said you missed your son's game. That's because you were out looking at houses. You were yeah. in the trenches. Yeah. And I was really, I mean, hustling. And I mean, I, there was times when I was, this is when I really got in real estate full, full time was 2009 ish. Right. When the market right. was, we were finding deals on the MLS. And so I would spend yeah. all night. I mean, I'd stay up till two or three o'clock. Dude, I got so good. I studied about eight different subdivisions, right? Uh -huh. that are in, in my little pocket area that I was like, this is my right. area. Yeah. And well, one little town of east, southeast Phoenix called Queen Creek. And uh -huh. even in Queen Creek, I only looked at about, I want to say eight subdivisions. But in those subdivisions, Larry, I was so good. I watched my numbers every day. I knew all my comps. I knew there's a difference between being in the front of a subdivision versus being in the back of the subdivision, right? Wow. Whether it's a two-story, one-story, you could tell me the whole deal concept of what the deal was, and I already knew exactly what I could pay for it. I knew what right. my, my, my average rehab cost was going to be. I knew what I would probably sell it for. Like I had, I mean, I knew all my numbers. And so when someone, and so when you're on the MLS and you all of a sudden a deal gets listed, I could call right away and be like, I want to make you a cash offer. Here's my numbers. Right. And I had speed and that right. speed. And, the, but it didn't happen overnight. I spent so many, my wife can attest to this. She'd see me on my computer up at night doing my comps, researching, researching, getting, Understanding wow. my numbers, understanding my stuff. But it paid off. But it paid big, off. Big time. It's called short term pain for long term gain. I got it where I get so I mean, and the real trick was as I made relationships with these uh the REO brokers, right? Right, right. And, and the short sale brokers. So when they got a list, I'm like, listen, let me double end this thing for you every time, right? Because you know, in real estate they have a listing side and they have a buyer's agent, right? So right, I, right. I said, guys, listen, you can have every deal you do, you can have both sides of the transaction, right? Like, I want you to have both, even though I was a realtor. I didn't care. Right. Right? Yeah. I'm like, the I want same you to, thing. I'm going to double love dip. It. I'm going to double dip with you, show them the money, and I'm very good and I'm very competent, and I'll give you a number that will work that I know we can close, and I'll close, right? And, dude, that made them so they would call me up, Corey, we got a new listing, We've not even put it on the MLS, so I'd have, you know, about an hour, two hours uh, notice before anybody else knows about the deal. Well, that's all right. I needed because usually by the time I'm on the phone, I'm like, listen, I'll just tell you to take the property. I need to buy it at this. Can you, can I buy it for this? And he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take that offer. Boom, done. Awesome. And and it's a relationship. Relationships and work, right? Relationships that's and right. work. And um but it's different from the life I live now. Now it's, it's just a different game. And, and 
I think as we start journeys with real estate, sometimes our pri- my priorities changed, and uh, and then I started I want to level up my game, right? Because I started off as a wholesaler because <laughs> um, right. I, I had no money and no credit, right? So I'm like, I gotta go find some smart guys with money, and find them some deals, right? So that's right. how I learned how to that's how I learned how to find deals. That's and, so important. That's so important. And the other cool thing about real estate having so many options as you grow and as you you put it level up you can go to the next thing like apartments or yeah. whatever it is you want to do right yeah you start with one and you learn that master it then you can add on another little piece and just like dude just like you're a connoisseur uh, i'll call you a connoisseur of information <laughs> okay <laughs> i have that same trait my friend i buy everything i know you do i, buy I know you do I buy so many people's courses. I've got, and I'm not going to show it to you. I've got courses that I've bought that I've not opened up. <laughs> right? You've never done that, right? <laughs> if I can see one handy here. Yeah. Here's one still in the street crap. <laughs> Here's one still in the street crap right yeah. here. <laughs> yep. And so I'm guilty of that. I, I'm like, man, because it sounds good at the time. I'm like, I, I want to learn it because I'm, I'm like you. I just like to learn, right? I don't always right. necessarily know that I'll, I'll need to do it, but I still like to learn it, right? I'm like, that's I mean, a good too. concept. Because you, I'm like, you never know when I not, might need to use that little thing, right? That right. one little thing they taught. I'm like, oh, I could use that on this deal right here. And so exactly. I, I like to learn. And um I guess we could call this whole thing love to learn real estate. <laughs> there you go. That's the name of this episode. After everything we talked about, we can just call it love to learn real estate. Um, <laughs> and you know, we can put a big bow around it because we can encompass everything we talked about with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, man. That's true. I, I love it. I love it. And you know, when you get to the level that we are, it's not just buying a book or a home study course anymore. I mean, we, we spend the big bucks now. I mean, you and I both are in a mastermind that's 25000 a year. We're in another one together that's ten grand and 1000 a month. I mean, yeah. we, you know, and that's just two little things that I know we're in together. You know? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't change it for the world, right? And, no. I'll, st- and I'll still buy other people's courses and products and um, – Hell, I, I'm not even bought yours. I'm like, man, I think I might have to buy yours. Well, because you, you I, probably I should. Bad. Yeah, you cause... probably should because I sent you a lot of money a few that's months right. ago. That's right. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm due. I'm due. I think I sent you 7500 bucks or something, whatever it was you charged for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, let's wrap it up, man. I, dude, I have so much fun talking with you, Larry. Uh, I feel like you're a kindred spirit and I love your energy and I love your enthusiasm and your outlook on real estate. I mean, you've been doing it so long and you still love it. I, I mean, do. That's, that's, that's very unique. I Cause I talk with a lot of guys that it feels like that they somehow they lose their passion some way down the road. And uh, yeah, and I, I do. I, I love the thrill of the hunt. I mean, I, I'm personally, going to start going back out into houses soon, you know, because I miss that part of it. I, yeah. I really do. Because I'm a firm believer a person should do what number one, their unique ability is and what they love to do. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I love I love the thrill of the sale. I love making the sale. I like getting on the phone with people. I like going in people's houses. You know, I, I enjoy that. It's relaxing to me. Right? Yeah. Especially when you come out with a contract, you know? And you know you can. And you know you exactly. can do it better than anybody else. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love it. Yeah. And and a lot of that is just because of who you are. Larry, yeah. you're, I mean, in the same way for me, because you can relate to just about anybody. Right? right. When you start from the zero, not that, every, and I'm not saying that it's a, I wear it like a, like a, a badge of honor, right? I started mm-hmm. from nothing. So there's nothing that you can say to me that I've probably not experienced or seen firsthand. Um, I hear you. So I get it. when I go into someone's house, I'm not judging. Because, <clears throat> you know, <throat> sometimes these homes that we go into, these people, especially when you're wholesaling, um, 
that thrill of the deal is is their uh, financial misfortune sometimes, right? Right. Or, or, or in a way where they're in a jam, and you've got to be relatable, because they'll sell to you when they're your friend, when you become That's friends you on got, the appointment. You got to get them to like you and trust you, and leave the door open for them to call you back. You know. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't get the deal right there and you got to be able to empathize with people. And yeah, there's a lot of people going through a lot of bad things and they need to sell their house. But, but one thing it took me a while to understand is they can always say no. Right. Always. In fact, I, tell them, I say, look, this is where I need to be. You know, I'm not telling you, you got to take it. You know, you may have other options. I don't know, but if you can, I can pay you cash. I can close quick. You don't have to worry about anything else. And this is exactly what you'll net. Yep. And dude, just by being that straightforward and that honest with people, man, there's so many people that do it wrong. They don't spend the, the 30 minutes just warming up to people, right? Yeah, like, you man, you, you gotta, can't even have gotta, that conversation until you've had... Listen, man, you ever seen the movie Tin Man? That was me for years. Yeah. I used to go in houses and sell siding, windows, roofs, kitchens, decks... You go into the house, you build rapport with people, you know, you sit down, you talk about the pictures of the kid playing baseball, you know, and you talk about the picture of the family and stuff. And, and, you know, you just build rapport with them. Can, can I get a glass of iced tea? <laughs> yeah. And they're usually the ones offering like, Hey, you want some tea? You're like, and you just learn, you say, yeah, I want some. Cause that's exactly. what friends do. Right. That's Man, right. That's, that's right. a that one concept, we can name this that concept now. That one, <laughs> we're actually giving some nuggets of advice here. That one thing right there, Larry, if people will just learn the value of, and, and it doesn't matter in any business situation, whether it's like we're talking with motivated sellers, but I'm thinking this translates with anybody I've ever met, um, whether it be your doctor, your dentist, your lawyer, people that are right. private money, but guys that give you money it's that exact same formula you got to come into their house or place of business or you meet at a restaurant but you've got to know their friends family and the pictures on the wall right if you got to build rapport you got to get them to like you and trust you and people like people who are like themselves yes. so like i mean just a couple of quick nuggets here if if i'm if i'm in somebody's house and they're talking real fast like this I'm going to be talking real fast like this, right? But if they're like, hey, how you doing? Come on in, you know? And if we're sitting sitting on the couch, you know, I'll start moving a little. Like, I'll start doing this. Then I'll go like yeah. this, yeah. you know? And what I'll do is I'll mirror and match them. Whatever they do, I do the exact same thing, right? Yeah. And when you know you have rapport, like, like if they start out, if they're doing this, right? About about thirty seconds later, I'm gonna do this, right? Yep. yep. And if they lean forward, I'm gonna lean forward, right? Yep. And the way you know you have rapport is if you start doing it and they match you subconsciously. That's how you know you have rapport. Yes. Right? Oh my gosh, <laughs> dude! You know what's so sad? <laughs> I call that the chameleon, by the way. Right? That's the chameleon. Yeah. Someone that can be shapeshifter, right? Right, I, was right, doing, right. I was doing a podcast from another guy from the Carolinas and he's a little thicker than you are on the accent. Right. And <laughs> really there is such a thing. <laughs> well, you know, and so even now, right now I'm forcing myself to not go country. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm serious. Man, Larry, I have this podcast. I'm as I finish it up and I'm, redoing it and like, you know, doing post-production stuff on it. Right. I'm, I'm listening to it. I'm like, who in the hell is that person on the audio? <laughs> Cause that's not Corey. That's country. <laughs> that was country Corey. That's not Phoenix Corey. <laughs> I, no man. So I was talking with Jay, you know, Jay, uh, Jay, yeah. uh, Connor. And so it's uh -huh. Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor. <laughs> You know, he's draw, I drawing, don't. drawing everything out, Corey, right? <laughs> and so next thing, I'm like, yeah, Jay. And I, I mean, and I'm listening to this thing, and I'm like, and so then I had to give a disclaimer on my podcast. I'm like, listen, uh, I just want everybody to know that on this one episode, uh, I sound country. 
And because when I get around my country friends, I just go there. Right? You can't help. It. It's Man. in you and it's got to come out. And dude, like, but it's funny if I go hang around with Hispanic people, I talk my Hispanic language. Right? I go, I go Hispanic culture on you. If I'm around, uh, I got a bunch of black friends. And so I get around them, I talk a little different. Right? Because they got to understand me. Right? Right. And they laugh because they're like, dude, you white. You're just a white guy, man. Like, you're trying. You're trying. They laugh. <laughs> you're trying. <laughs> but, um, but it's that whole concept of I try to emulate what people, who they are. Right? After a while, see, Corey, you and I, you and I grew up having to fake it till we make it, right? Yeah. We grew up having to work for what you got, having to hustle, having to grind, and having to learn how to sell, having to learn how to close people, how to learn how to be closers. And, and all that stuff has helped you and I both become who we are, which are closers in whatever we do. And, yeah. and that's why exactly what you just said, whoever you're around, you mirror and match them. We've done it so long, we, we can't stop. It's just, it's subconscious, right? <laughs> My wife's like, what are you doing? I go, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, uh, with that said, man, uh, listen, everybody's going to want to know how to get a hold of Larry. Um, how do people find you? Because uh, they, they need to go find Larry Goins for sure. Well, uh, how about I give away a book or something? Yeah. Um, I got I got a book called HUD Homes Half Off. It's all about how to buy HUD houses for pennies on the dollar. And uh, and we've got about seven HUD deals on the board right now, anywhere from 40 to 60% of list price we're paying right now in today's market. If you want a free copy, go to free HUD book dot com free hud book dot com and uh grab it and we'll send it to you and uh won't cost you a thing oh man that's amazing thank you hey and you got run your own podcast so what's what's the name of your podcast it's called brain pick a pro brain brain pick a pro dude yeah awesome. brain pick a pro dot com and uh yeah and, and i interview uh, you said this is like episode 38. I'm up to 115 now, I believe. Yeah, or brother. That, that's, on my, that's on my brag radio. I got a brag radio show too called, uh, that stands for Be Rich and Generous. We teach people how to invest and then want them to go out and be generous with their blessings, you know. And yeah. uh, But the Brain Pick a Pro, we just started it back up. I used to do this thing, man, back in the 90s when it was a teleconference, right? Yeah. But now we do a podcast. We just started it up. Uh, a few months ago and i think we're up to episode like 20 now or something oh man that's awesome dude uh larry man it is such a pleasure i mean honestly <laughs> i love i love just talking with you getting to know you even more uh i'm having a blast this is going to be a great show probably be one of my best ever and um so hey listen i'm going to talk to my audience real quick if you're out there and and you are looking at this thing called real estate and you know you get confused. Um, man, here's the thing. You've got to, you got to program your mind. Your mind is your most powerful asset that you own. It really, truly is. And what you tell yourself daily matters, right? And I'm going to tell you right now what Larry, if you don't go get Larry's book, you're stupid. Okay. First of all, <laughs> right? just tell it like it is. <laughs> I'm just going to say like, that's a great offer. If you don't do it, I'm going to go do it. <laughs> what do you want right. for nothing? Your money back? <laughs> yeah, you know, but like you got to do that for sure. But the truth is this, man, you got to, you got to visualize your success. You know, even at a young age, like you, Larry, at a young age, we started visualizing our success. We want it to be significant. You've got to want to be significant. And what's in between your two ears is everything. And so you've <laughs> got to tell yourself that you are the one that you're capable, that you have everything. God has given you all the gifts that you need to succeed. And I'm telling you right now, if you will believe that and start telling yourself daily, your paradise is possible. That's exactly right. I got one more for you, Corey. The most important piece of real estate you'll ever invest in 
is the six inches between your ears. Boom. That's a mic drop. <laughs> drop the mics. Hey, thanks for everybody for showing up on the, uh, on the podcast. Tune in next week. We'll have more exciting episodes for you. Thanks and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Awesome. See you, buddy. Thanks.